We're going to go to our uh, lightning round and ask you a series of short answer, yes or no, or one word questions. Uh, first for Jonathan Rose, uh, true or false, the 1950s produced no architecture of lasting value. <laughs> Generally true, but not totally true. Peter Calthorpe, Los Angeles will be a walkable and transit-friendly city within 20 years. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jonathan Rose, European towns in general are more livable and functional than American towns. Yes. Peter Calthorpe, most Americans don't want to live like Europeans with their small homes and cars. False. Uh, Jonathan Rose, which city in the world has the best cycling culture? Copenhagen. This is from a paragraph in your book. That's an uh, easy one. Give me one. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a real softball. Uh, uh, okay, Peter, Peter Calthorpe, which has the best uh, subway? Ooh, I would say, man, well, geez, that's really hard. <laughs> the most beautiful is Moscow by far, if you've ever been down in it. What did you say, best? The best subway system. Uh, you know, London or New York? Uh, Jonathan Is there Rose? a right answer? I agree with Jonathan, at least what he wrote in his book. Jonathan? I would say New York. What does the book say? Oops. <laughs> book says Hong, the, the book says Hong Kong. Oh, oh uh, excuse me. Okay. So, wait, wait, okay. So let's, can I, we're in the lightning round. I'll, I can explain that later. But, so quickly explain Hong Kong or, or, okay. uh, or New so, York. I mean, so it's actually subway trains is an incredible system because what they did is they not only developed the system, they're real estate developers. The system is a real estate developer. So everywhere there's a stop, they own all the land around it. And then they developed it. They get all the income from that. So it's a hugely profitable system and plow that back into the system. So it's a subway train. It's, 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 it's less subway and tr it's more train, but it's a fantastic system. And it's, it's, it's the same is true in Tokyo yeah. in spades, which is the rail lines and the subway lines own the TOD stations. And, you know, actually, when you look at it, biggest city on the planet has the best air quality uh, in, in its, in its uh, class of cities and, and the most mobility. And it's the densest and biggest. And so it just shows things can work. Interesting, that combination of land development and transportation. Uh, back to Lightning with Jonathan Rose. Which city has the most advanced smart grid? I don't remember. Austin. Uh, most Thank you. It's glad most somebody read my book. Most stormwater system? Uh, Philadelphia. And uh, this is easy. Best congestion traffic pricing. They're famous for this. Is London. Uh, Peter Calthorpe. Wait, can I add one more? Sure. Uh, the highest rate of recycling in the world? San Francisco. Uh, Peter Calthorpe, the living architect you respect most. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the living architect. That makes it really difficult. Yeah, Grubo Can we come back to that later? He likes all those guys from the 50s. Uh, I, I have a hard time with architects, I have to tell you. <laughs> I, I think, you, but there's a new generation of architects that are finally getting it right. And uh, the whole lead movement and the focus on green has not only solved energy problems, but it's made more beautiful buildings. I mean, the buildings are much more textured and interesting and uh, memorable than they were, and they're much better to live in. I mean, it's a, it's a complete revolution. When I went to architecture school, it was Philip Johnson and all these evil people <laughs> doing, doing, you know, just cartoons, turning buildings into cartoons. And they came on the coattails of the brutalists who were happy about that name. <laughs> they thought that was a good name for their movement, brutal, brutalism. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's hard. To, they, they, we're heading in the right direction. I can't point at the one I love the most. Renzo Piano, I will say, a, you know, who, who did uh, um, our, the work in San Francisco here, uh, I love dearly because he really does care deeply about climate and he has a certain elegance to his work. He, I believe, designed the California Academy of Sciences. Yeah. Uh, jo Jonathan Rose, the living architect you most respect. I respect many of them, but I'm going to point out just one. Uh, I'm going to point out two. So uh, one is Nick Grimshaw, who is uh, from England. He's very, very, very green, very community focused. He's done amazing transit centers around the world, very technical in his work. And Jeannie Gang from Chicago, who's doing also really interesting urbanism. Uh, 
Peter Calthorpe, the living architect you least respect. <laughs> oh, that's easy. Rem Kulas. Jonathan Rose, living architect you least respect. The, the living architect that I least respect is actually not one architect, but if you actually think about it, most of America is not designed by people like Rem Koolhaas or Nick Grimshaw or any of these people. It, it, the, the mediocrity, so remember the question about the, I know it's the lightning round, but the question about the European villages, the general, just general background building that's just the ordinary building is so graceful and fitting with the environment and natural and made out of local materials and all that. And the, the, the general quality of just commercial development in the United States uh, is not. Pretty, pretty good. Um, true or false, Peter Calthorpe, some of the areas des designated for new housing construction along San Francisco Bay will be threatened in the next couple of decades by rising seas. Well, I think the rising sea, yes. Yes. And the ri rising, uh, there's more to say here, sorry. <laughs> Uh, that's another one of the collective responsibilities. You cannot solve the sea level rise one place at a time. There needs to be a base, a base scale solution. This is an association. I'll mention a, a place or a noun. You just mentioned what first comes to mind uh, when I mention uh, Peter Calthorpe, Millennium Tower. <laughs> oh, God. Unfortunate. Uh, Peter Calthorpe, Treasure Island. A real possibility. Jonathan Rose, the Jersey Shore. Uh, subject to climate risk. Still, the building back right in the same place. Uh, Peter Calthorpe, Beijing. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, lethal. Jonathan Rose, lead buildings. A good step. Uh, Peter Calthorpe, rising seas. Well, you really want to get me on this sea rise thing, don't you? It, when I wrote um, this, I didn't know you were going to talk about it so much before. Um, you know, obviously tra tragic. Last one, Jonathan Rhodes, Hudson Yards in New York City. It's a, for those who are not from New York, it's a large new urban infill development over rail yards, which is a good thing. Um, That's enough. But they're your friends, so you're not going to say more. Uh, I don't think a lot about Hudson Yards. There are other issues. I, I, my work is much more focused on uh, low-income and moderate-income communities. And, and so I observe the, the development of the more prosperous parts of cities. I, I, I observe it, but it's not the world I really focus most of my attention on. It, that cities need prosperity, by the way. I'm not against prosperity at all. I'm not against jobs. I'm not against new development. I'm not against tall, shiny buildings. It's just not the area I focus on. That's the end of our lightning round. How they do, let's give them a hand for getting through the, the gauntlet of the lightning round.